I got the fitted on talking about capital, my goodness. Oh my goodness. What's going on guys, Ray here. Welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are doing well. And today, it is finally the time for me to kind of discuss and showcase off the brand Capital. A couple of brands that I've been talking about countlessly on this channel is Visum and Capital, which honestly are my favorite brands as of today. Kind of going back to my, I guess, fashion timeline. So Capital wasn't really a brand that I was gravitating to just because of the eccentricity of the brand, just how crazy and like almost avant-garde the brand looks. So kind of just going back to, I guess, my fashion timeline, I initially discovered Capital in 2013. Uh, the collection, I believe, was called Indigenous, and it was like a ton of like patchwork. Um, I'm gonna throw some pictures here, but a bunch of patchwork, wool, and uh, just at that time, I wasn't really fully ready to understand uh, just the beauty of those type of clothing. So I was wearing more of like, I don't know, 2013, was it the like ASAP Rocky kind of black scale time? Um, so capital or clothing that looked like that was really out of my kind of focal point. So within the Louis Vuitton 2013 collection, it was kind of like a collaboration within that collection. I don't think a lot of people really talked about it as once again, the look was just really out there. But I was really intrigued just seeing how complex that jacket looked. It is not until like maybe 2018, I loving and delving more into workwear. Before I kind of started this YouTube channel, I was dabbling a lot into workwear. Uh, we obviously have brands like, you know, Dickies, Levi's, a little bit of Visvim and uh, starting to dabble with Capital. Season to season, they don't cease to amaze me with the garments that they drop. Absolutely phenomenal work. And I just love how playful Capital is compared to Visvim. Kind of comparing Visvim and Capital real quick. Visvim, I would say is that they take more vintage archival pieces and kind of put their Japanese twist to it without changing the format too much. When it comes to Capital, Example, they will take a American bomber jacket and they're gonna add a bunch of patches, embroidery, things like that, which makes it honestly playful and just more interesting in my opinion. That's where I like Capital for, I guess, the more playful aspect of clothing. And then I go to Visum to get more heritage uh, and more like, I guess, staples, if that makes any sense. All right, so I did a lot of rambling, just really talking about Capital. Um, and how I got into it. But for this portion of the video, I'm gonna do like a quick history, probably like two minutes just talking about it. And then from there, I will showcase all the pieces that I have. I wouldn't say that I have a whole collection of garments and I feel like all the pieces that I currently own in my collection are things I don't really see myself selling down the line. It's just items that I've been keeping throughout the years. And even though I'm kind of refining my style ever so slightly, these pieces are definitely things that will stay in my closet. That's the beautiful thing about Capital, whereas like other brands I buy, kind of see that my style is switching and I sell them off. But with Capital, every single piece that I own from the get, um, I still do have them. That's where I kind of see like there's staying power in the brand and I'm just very interested and invested in said brand. So enough with the talking, let's go to B-roll footage and talk about Capital and then I'll showcase off the pieces. So it's gonna be very interesting. We have absolute bangers and grails in my opinion. Let's get it, let's go. Capital is a father and son duo brand founded in 1985 in Okayama, Japan. Toshikio Hirata, who is the father, conceived the brand after falling in love with the art of American style mid-century denim. Upon his return back to Japan, he relocated to Kojima, where he involved himself in the denim industry. Quick tidbit, a lot of people may ask why the name Capital. As many as you may know, Kojima Kurashiki is often regarded as the capital of denim, hence the name Capital with the K. Capital has always been a brand that focuses on traditional techniques, merging itself with various cultures such as American, Native Indian, Northern European, without forgetting the opulence, which is Japanese culture. Now that we got the summary out of the way, let's talk about the pieces that I personally own. Kicking off the video with accessories, let's begin with the Capital Snufkin bag. Details include it being made out of a heavy duty 16 ounce duck canvas in this sort of like olive drab military green colorway. It also features dual heavy duty YKK zippers and finally cowhide leather straps. 
I've had this item for the past two years. It's been holding up quite beautifully. This is the kind of bag that you don't really need to baby or to take care of as it's made with premium heavy duty materials. It honestly lasts you a lifetime. As far as sizing goes, I believe the Snufkin model comes in two or three different sizes. This one here is the smallest version. Despite its appearance, it can honestly hold a ton of stuff. Oh so yes, item number one, capital Snufkin bag. Let's keep it moving. Continuing on to our next accessory, right here we have a pair of watches. This specific one right here is called the Rain Smile Divers Watch. It's such a beautiful yet playful piece to have. This model closely resembles the Seiko's SBDX model and this watch released back in October 2019. First off, the crystal or face features the at this point staple smiley face coming with a thin black NATO nylon strap complemented by tonal case and dial. Contrary to its kiddish appearance, this watch is actually very heavy duty, feels substantial in the hand and upon receiving it, I was just blown away by the quality. I also forgot to mention that this watch is water resistant, so not entirely waterproof, but it gets the job done. Continuing on to our second watch, I would say the appearance is pretty much exactly the same with slight differences as the black variant does have more of like a military dial and like look to it compared to this one, which looks more of like a lifestyle variant. I'm not entirely sure if this version is waterproof, nor will I try and test it out, but this one is absolutely beautiful. It has like a nice yellow gold finishing to it, very shiny and altogether just a beautiful set of watches. Retail price for both hovers between 190 and 250, which isn't the cheapest of watches, but considering that I use it every single day, it's well worth the price of entry. So yes, capital watch combo, let's keep it moving. So with all the accessories out of the way, let's continue on to tops. And right here we have the Beethoven Moonlight Crew Neck. This piece right here is an absolute gem as for some odd reason, I've been on the hunt for the Beethoven crew neck. Upon doing some research, I found out that Baiting Ape did release this, I think in the 90s. Um, but unfortunately the size that I seen online was too small. So I had to forfeit that crew. But luckily a couple months back, I did find the exact Beethoven crew at a vintage shop, which I picked up. And looking at the footage, you can definitely see where Capital took inspiration. It's pretty much a carbon copy one-to-one -one, uh, with just the added Capital touches. Quickly talking about the Capital piece, this is the French Terry crew with the Wranglin sleeves. It's a nice mid-weight, so it's not too heavy nor too light. Nice baggy fit to it. I believe this is a size three or four, which is equivalent to like a medium large. The color itself is absolutely stunning. It's a blend between oatmeal and heather gray. Complements each other so beautifully. Just the combination of all these different aspects in a crew neck to me is art. Absolute art. And this is a piece that I don't see myself selling in the near future or ever selling as it's such a I don't know, timeless piece. That's all I can say, timeless. Finally, this item was picked up from my homies' shop called Thirdborn. I'll make sure to link their store down below, but they do sell a wide array of garments, such as Japanese, you know, Capital. They do have the current brands, such as Rick, Raf, all that good stuff. I'll make sure to link it, check them out. Continuing on to our next item, right here we have the 5G Cotton Knit Smiley Patch Crew Sweater. My goodness, that's a mouthful in the khaki colorway. So this is one of their more popular pieces as I've seen it kind of circulate around Instagram quite frequently. As in my opinion, this is the more wearable, easier to style compared to the more you know eccentric, more avant-garde items. So once again, just going over details, this item features a cotton blend. It also has a good amount of natural distressing, such as little tears and holes throughout the entire garment. The fit itself, I would say, is more of like a drapey fit and it does come in two different sizes, size one and three. And the problem is that I'm kind of between those two sizes. So it's either you get a very small one or a very baggy one. And the way that I'm built, like a mini fridge, isn't really like the best when it comes to this kind of garment because it just looks like I'm either floating in this or it's way too tight on me. But 
I rather it be, I would say, more baggy than too tight. In addition, it also features the signature smiley face on each elbow. And finally, just the color itself, such a beautiful like marled green. It's not one-to-one -one olive, but it does have some undertones of dark green, which makes it such a unique color. So there it is, capital 5G sweater. Let's keep it moving. All right, so let's jump over to denim. I wanna kinda keep the best for last, so we're not gonna spoil that. Right here, this is an item that I've kind of talked about in countless videos and this is the wide raw denim. So I was trying to find more information about this piece as a lot of people have been requesting just you know to know what this exact piece is about. But unfortunately, besides having the capital patch in the back, I'm not entirely sure what exact model or name this is. So if anybody in the comments can help me out or help anybody that's interested in this pair, um, that would greatly be appreciated. Details that I can add to this piece is that this is a pair of raw denims and the proportions are just astronomically big uh, for the sake of being big. The way that I like to normally style this type of item is that the top portion of my outfit will be something more cropped so we're not just having baggy on top and baggy in the bottom, kind of playing a little bit with proportions. This is bar none, one of my favorite items in my closet. I've had it for the past, I believe, two years and I do wear it quite frequently. As you guys can see in the B-roll footage, I just paired it with a pair of Adidas Rivalry Lows. I normally wear it with like my Reebok Club C's or my Converse's, nothing too fancy as just the fit if you kind of wear it with boots or something will look a little bit wonky. Spoke about these a lot, let's keep it moving to our next pair of denims. Continuing on to our next item, right here we have a pair of repaired Patrick denims. And one thing that I can put out there is that I'm not entirely sure if this pair came default with the kind of repair work done or this was a clean pair that throughout the years somebody was fixing. Nonetheless, this is such an amazing piece and I'm just over the moon to be owning them. Glancing over at the piece, firstly, you notice just the intricate wash. So it's kind of like a mix between raw denim and kind of light wash. So it's in that between period. In addition, you can see all the repairs that the pants has been put through. Knees have these beautiful zigzaggy stitch patterns, as well as little patchwork details on the thigh area. And finally, flipping the piece over, you definitely notice just that beautiful whiskering detail behind, which is just the culmination of all these little details make this a piece of art. I'm not entirely sure if you notice, but standing at certain angles, uh, there is a slight flare to the pants. So it's not as pronounced as on, you know, more wider pants, but it does have a slight flare. I went ahead and paired it with the Julia 7 boots, such a gem and this is like a perfect summer outfit. Just put a t-shirt, have these pants, pair of boots, call it a day, let's keep it moving. All right, so from this point on, we are entering grail status. I haven't used this word in a long time, but these two pieces right here are certified bangers. Hide your kids, hide your wife, clench your butt cheeks. This is about to go crazy, let's go. Kicking off the certified banger segment, right here we have the Capital Boro Spring First Jacket. One of Capital's most coveted pieces to this day is the Boro First Jacket. With a silhouette based off the Levi's Type 1 denim trucker jacket, the Boro First Jacket intricately meshes traditional Americana with Japanese sensibilities. The jacket's most striking detail is the outer appearance handmade using the Boro tradition. According to Wikipedia, Boro is derived from the Japanese Boro Boro meaning something tapered or repaired. Boro refers to the practice of reworking and repairing textile. The first thing that came in my mind looking at this piece was a puzzle. The almost exaggerated overlapping of different layers and fabrics, such as little pieces of cotton twill kind of ever so slightly peeking throughout the garment, denim patches, and just the erratic nature of the sashiko stitch makes this piece of work of art. In addition, the hardware are all capital branded, which have gone through some sort of aging process to kind of give it more of that vintage look. This piece has so many beautiful, intricate details that I can talk about this for the next couple of hours if you really wanna go into the minutia of this item, but we're gonna kind of keep it short and finally talk about sizing. 
So when it comes to this specific jacket, I decided to go with a size three, which is equivalent to like a medium large. It honestly fits like a glove. So there we have it. Capital first boro jacket, absolute stunner, certified banger. Let's keep it moving. Finishing off the video right here, we have the 14 ounce Capital Flare Star custom patchwork denims. And echoing what I said for the very first piece, this is a work of art. Looking at this piece, you honestly don't even know where to start talking about as it is packed full of little minute details such as the various overlapping patches with honestly different fabrics so we have some suede we have some corduroy we have some twill we have some printed cotton and on top of that there is such a beautiful embroidery kind of going through it there's chain stitching man man oh man this is a certified banger so I know this item came in two different models, which I have the quote unquote cheaper one. Um, I know that Sanjeev has the insane remake, which I think retails for 2,800, it's some absorbent amount, but that model does have a multitude of extra patches, not that we needed more, and the flares are more pronounced. So like the name entails, that is the insane remake, uh, but I'm, just happy with this piece. As far as sizing goes, normally when it comes to Japanese denim, specifically capital, I go up a whole size. So for this one, normally I am a size 32 waist, but for these denims, I went with the size 34 and it fits beautifully. So insane piece, so many details, I cannot even start. What a work of art, just an absolute insane piece. When I see garments that look this good, it just makes me appreciate fashion as a whole and just the masterful work that is Japanese made garments. You cannot beat Japanese when it comes to just creating garments and the creative vision and art that they put out is absolutely insane. So this piece right here, in my opinion, is a certified banger once again, a work of art, something that will never depart from my closet. Whew. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed me rambling and talking about Capital for not sure how long this video is gonna go, but nonetheless, hope you guys enjoyed it. I really had a lot of fun showing you guys off my pieces and just really gushing about Capital for this long. So long awaited video, hope you guys enjoy. Let's jump out to our outro. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, definitely make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell if you guys want to get updated whenever I post a brand new video. Also, if you guys want to follow your boy on Instagram at RayGMia, post a lot of cool pictures in my opinion, fit pics and all that. If you're interested in talking or whatsoever, just hit me up on Instagram. Besides that, next video will be the pickups. Very excited. I don't even know how long that video is going to be because I did pick up a ton of stuff and I condense all the items in the past nine months, do a pickups video and go from there. So thank you guys for watching. Once again, appreciate y'all. Gotta edit this video. See you guys next time. Peace.